President Biden will travel to Baltimore today to receive an operational update on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse and to meet with the families of the victims. Since that accident last Tuesday, crews have begun working to clear the wreckage and the federal government has provided about $60 million in relief to Maryland. President Biden has been pushing for Congress to fully foot the bill to rebuild the bridge as the Port of Baltimore, of course, is a major hub for the American economy. Joining us now from Baltimore, Maryland's Democratic Governor, Wes Moore. Governor Moore, it's great to have you back with us this morning. Um, what does it look like now about 10 days on since that tragic accident on the bridge when the fully loaded cargo ship hit it? It collapsed in those overnight hours. How is the recovery? How is the cleanup going? Well, I think the state is still mourning. Uh, you know, we still have uh, four souls that are unaccounted for, and, and uh, we are all committed to making sure we can bring a sense of closure uh, and comfort to these families who are, who are living a nightmare. Uh, and we also know that we have seen a maritime disaster uh, that's unprecedented, uh, a ship that is literally the size of the Eiffel Tower and the weight of the Washington Monument that's now sitting in the middle of the Patapsco River with a bridge, an iconic bridge sitting on top of it and about 27,000 tons of wreckage that is now sitting in the water. Uh, but we also know that we've since seen a measure of resilience uh, and a measure of, of, of collective resolve that has been inspiring by the people of this state. And so I think we continue to see when we say Maryland tough and Baltimore strong, we have folks every single day who are showing exactly what that means and what it looks like. Governor, good morning. Good to see you. We expect to hear from President Biden later today. He'll call for full federal funding of this repair work. Uh, please weigh in and, and you give us your thoughts on that. But secondly, secondarily, give us a timetable, if you will, uh, not for the rebuilding of the bridge, which I know is going to be quite lengthy, but just clearing the wreckage there of the boat and the debris. When can that be removed so the port can open again? Well, so we've been grateful that the, the Biden administration has been with us uh, every step of the way. I think I got my first phone call from the White House at three o'clock in the morning, uh, the morning of the of the tragedy. And it has been consistent throughout where they have continued to walk this path with us. And the thing that we know is that we are going to we're going to need it because this is not just something that's impacting Baltimore. It's not just something that's impacting the state of Maryland. Uh, the port of Baltimore is responsible for 70 billion dollars annually. Uh, we are looking at a port that is the largest port for agricultural equipment, the largest port for new cars, the largest port for heavy trucks, the largest ports for spices and sugars. So this is not just impacting Marylanders. This is impacting the farmer in Kentucky. It's impacting the auto dealer in Ohio. It's impacting the restaurant owner in Tennessee. It's impacting the entire country and our economic growth. And the complexity of this operation is significant. You know, we have divers who are going down there. We've been running a 24-7 operation. And we have divers who are going down and cannot see any further than a foot or two in front of them because of the amount of wreckage that is still very much in the water. And so we know that this is not just a rallying cry for the state of Maryland. This really is a rallying cry for the country. And so that level of support is going to be important. We know that the, uh, the, uh, the, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have indicated that we are hoping to be able to continue opening up channels. Uh, I was amazed that in the first week we were able to open up two channels for smaller vessels and boats and tugs that can now enter into the area, starting to get our commercial activity back going again. While we know it's going to be a long journey uh, and, uh, and the Army Corps of Engineers have indicated that they are hoping that we can have channels up to 35 foot depth open within, uh, within a month, we know it's going to take everything, everything, all hands on deck in order to accomplish that. But we know we're prepared to give just exactly that. Governor, thousands of Marylanders, of course, cross that bridge every day and their jobs depend on crossing that bridge in many cases. Just give us a sort of sense of what has happened to their lives, their daily routines uh, since the bridge went down. You're absolutely right, Caddy. Uh, uh, over 36,000 people would cross that bridge every single day. Uh, and so our Maryland Department of Transportation uh, has been, been working around the clock to create alternative routes, being able to utilize areas like 95 and 895 to get people from where they live to where they work, where they worship, where they, where they go to school. Uh, and so while, while we've been able to create these alternative lanes and alternative uh, avenues of traffic, uh, we know that we're also 
also asking patience for the people of this state. And it does bring up a much larger point about critical infrastructure. You know, the highest priority that I have as a chief executive is to make sure that our people are safe and to make sure that we're moving in a coordinated fashion to ensure safety for all of our people. And that includes critical infrastructure. And so I think this is just a, a continued uh, evolution that we have got to do to make sure that we have multiple pathways, multiple modal transportation assets for people to go from where they live to where they work. That's also going to help to get an economic engine going and making sure that economic growth can be participatory and not exclusionary. All right. We hope they can get back up and running. And in the meantime, as you say, our thoughts are with those six families mourning the loss of loved ones this week again. Maryland Governor Westmore, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for being here this morning. God bless you guys and thank you. Thanks, Governor. Still hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.